Hey, in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the best place to find startup funding for your nonprofit. Let's get into it. Tiffany with Boss on a Budget. I help new and small nonprofits get up and running. So if you need help, make sure you are subscribed to my channel because I drop videos all the time and all I talk about is startup funding for nonprofits and how to start your nonprofit. So I want to talk today about the best place to find startup funding for your organization. So I'm jumping right into this one. I don't need to waste a lot of time for the answer, but I am gonna break it down like I, like I like to do. So the answer is your local community. So what do I mean by local community? This could be your local like geographic community, but it also could be the community of people who have experienced something similar or the community of people who operate in your industry. The reason why I'm saying your local community is because fundraising comes through relationships. So it's important to be connected to movers and shakers in your community, the networks and communities of people who are associated with you like your board or your volunteers or even donors so that you can make connections to be able to provide opportunities for your organization. So I'm just gonna provide four tips to provide more context to what I mean by your local community so that you can use these same tips to get startup funding for your nonprofit. So the first thing I wanna say is that don't just go right to national funding. People's natural reactions when it comes to funding is to go for the big dogs. They go for the big players in the field. But a lot of times the big players are more interested in organizations who have a national scope or more interested in people who are bigger. I'm not saying that they won't fund smaller organizations or startups, but a lot of times when you're looking for, for example, national funders who fund all across the country, they may not take notice to the work you're doing as a small organization. Another way I can explain this is like when you're looking for donors and people be like, oh, let's just hit up LeBron James or let's just hit up Oprah, right? You're going right to the big dogs when you probably have little Oprahs, little LeBrons in your local area that you might have connections to and you should be working those connections because it'll take way less time to get in front of them and to build relationships within with them versus an Oprah or LeBron. Now don't come on this video talking about, but I know Oprah and I know LeBron and I can get, I know, but we're not talking to you, okay? We're talking about the normal, the regular nonprofits who are just getting started, who aren't as connected yet. So my first piece of advice is don't just go for the big organizations. You have a lot of wealth and a lot of treasure in the people that you know. The problem is you're probably not asking the people that you know who's affiliated with them and who can support your organization. The second piece of advice I would give you is to identify who those people are. Identify good prospects in your area that you want to develop relationships with. And this could be in the government space. This could be in the charitable space. This could be in the corporate space, right? So there may be family foundations in your local area that you may have connections to. There are businesses who have some kind of stake in your area, right? Maybe they have a large factory or large presence in your area, right? And maybe they do a lot of employee engagement and you can interact with their employees to do volunteer work or get their employees to raise money on your behalf. When it comes to your government officials, you should absolutely reach out to your elected officials, set up meetings with them, talk to them about the work that you're doing and learn more from them about how they support local organizations. So I would recommend you write out a list of people who have some kind of stake in the work that you're doing. Now it may be geographically, maybe they care about you know the same geographic area that you're covering, maybe they funded or supported a particular issue or a particular population in the past that you're also interested in. And so there's some connection there. So identify who those people are and what your connections may be so you can begin to reach out to them. The third piece of advice I would give you is to prioritize making relationships. Don't prioritize getting something out of those prospects I just mentioned. Prioritize making real relationships. And what does it take to make a real genuine relationship? I want you to think about that because it's not asking people every time you meet them to do something for you because even in your own personal life that would get on your nerves right if a person that you just met every time you see them they asking you for something you would go the other way right so why wouldn't you expect the same 
from people you're trying to meet and get things from in your local community. So I want you to think about what it means to have a real authentic relationship with someone. Provide value. Think about what they would need from you. Think about what they could gain from you. And everyone, it doesn't matter if you're small, if you haven't done a whole lot of work yet, you have some kind of value that you can provide. For example, for your elected officials, you are a constituent. That is your value, and that is of immense value to them, especially in an election year. So it may look really good to their other constituents for them to see that you all are working together or that you're talking about an issue and trying to figure it out in your local community. For businesses, it may be a really good look for a business to show that they're partnering with the local nonprofit or they're working on an issue with the local nonprofit. So try to identify the areas where you can provide value, you can be of assistance, and work on developing real relationships with people, getting to know them, getting to know what their goals are so you all can collaborate and partner together. And my last piece of advice, and I kind of alluded to it earlier, is to tap into your networks. You probably think that you don't know a lot of people, but maybe you do, because I've actually come across people who actually know a lot of people. They have a lot of people in their network, but they're afraid to approach them. But in order to get funding, you have to not be afraid to ask when it's time to ask. Now, to my point I just made earlier, you're not asking every single time. That's not the single purpose of you working with this person or working with this organization, but at some point you're gonna need an ask, right? And so you can't be afraid to tap in and to call in people when you need to. So think about people that you're associated with in different circles in your life. Personally, when it comes to family and friends. Professionally, when it comes to your job or other work endeavors. What about socially? You may be a part of different clubs or part of different groups, right? And so think about the circles that you impact in your life and that impact you. And all of those people may have some kind of connection to the work you're doing, whether it's a connection to you directly and wanting to support you, whether it's wanting to support that cause or both. It can be both, right? And think about how to form that ask to get them to to move on your behalf to give and support your organization. So I recommend like you you really think about who in your network you can it can energize, you can motivate, and you can activate. That's the word I was looking for, activate, to be able to support your organization. Cause you will be surprised the people who will act because you ask them to, right? And I, I get it. I'm one of those people who I don't like asking for anything, even if it could help me even if it could get me out of a rut. I really don't wanna feel like I have to depend on people, but sometimes you gotta call in your supports. Like you've been a support, you've been a friend to other people and there's nothing wrong with asking people to do something. And you never know where people are. You never know what people are willing to do or how they're willing to step up until they're asked. But this is the thing, don't be mad if they don't. Don't be mad if they're not activated or it may take them a while. So all you can do is make the ask and then see if they'll move on your behalf or on your organization's behalf. And if they don't, that's fine. You can just move to the next person. So before I jump off this video, I just wanna make another plug for my peer-to-peer -peer fundraising workbook. I talk about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising a lot because it's effective and it works. If you're looking to get a lot of donors, especially if you're new, if you're looking to get an infusion of money when you don't have a lot, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is one of the most effective ways to do that and one of the quickest ways you can raise money. So I really recommend that you watch the video that I'm linking above, but also check out my workbook where it gives you a schedule, it gives you sample messaging, it gives you your entire roadmap to, to plan out your own fundraising campaign. So in 30 days, you can have the money you need to run your programs, all right? If you need help with your nonprofit, don't forget to visit me at www.bossinabudget.com and I'll see you in the next video.